Hello! Welcome to ResoCoder! In this tutorial, we're going to make ourselves an opponent, and for that, we're gonna need to make some sort of artificial intelligence. So let's get to it! First up, we're gonna create another player game object by dragging player blue sprite from the art folder into the scene. Let's rename it to AI Blue, and I'm also gonna drag it up in the hierarchy. We want this game object to be the same as the player which we can control, with one exception. We obviously don't want to be able to drag this blue paddle, so we are not gonna add player movement script over here. We can simply copy the components from player red. To copy a component, you right click on it, select copy component, and now we can go over to AI Blue, click on any already existent component and paste component as new. And we want to do the same thing with rigid body 2D, so copy component from player red and paste it into AI Blue. If you look over to the scene view, something is not right. The area in which our player red can move, which is indicated by the green circles, is going beyond the player's half of the playing field. We need to shrink it. To do that, we have to go to the BG and barrier because that's where the, our boundary holder is located. And now we want to move the up barrier a bit down and kind of just position it correctly. And while we are doing this, we can also position the players and the puck. And let's test if everything works correctly. So we can move our player only in this area, which is completely correct. We also need to add a boundary for the AI. We can duplicate player boundary holder by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. Let's rename it to AI boundary holder and the original one will be called player boundary holder. Let's also change the colors of the AI boundary holder points to for example yellow and move them to the upper half of the playing field. And there's still one boundary left. Our AI must be able to know if the puck is located on its half of the field. We cannot use the boundary for AI itself because it's a bit smaller than the actual size of the upper half. Remember that this boundary needs to have a little distance from the sides because it restricts position of the center of the game object, not its edges. Because of this, we need to create AI Pack Boundary Holder by duplicating previously created AI Boundary Holder. So again, select it in the hierarchy and press Ctrl D. And it's gonna be called AI Pack Boundary Holder. And we wanna move the points of this boundary holder exactly to the sides, without a gap. Alright, and now just to be able to distinguish it from the regular AI Boundary Holder, let's change the icons to yellow rectangles. Awesome! Now it's time to make an AI script. So we want to go to the scripts folder and click on create new C sharp script and we are going to call it AI script and let's open it in our favorite IDE. First let's create a couple of fields which will be used by our AI. So public float max movement speed, private rigid body 2D RB, which is gonna be the rigid body of the AI, also private vector to starting position. Then we wanna create a public rigid body 2D puck, which is gonna hold a reference to the rigid body of the puck, and also public transform player boundary holder. And we also wanna create a private boundary player boundary. And what is going on here? Why can't we use our boundary struct which we have created in the previous tutorial? Well, that's because it's inside a class called player movement, right here. We have two options now. We can either write player movement.boundary each time that we want to use the boundary in our AI script, which would be totally feasible. But in order to do that, we would also have to make this struct public. And now everyone should be happy. And yeah, we can totally do that. But it's kind of silly to do that, in my opinion. And the second option is that we can move the boundary struct away from the player movement class, which will allow us to use it by just writing boundary as before. And I'm gonna choose the second option. And to make that second option happen, Let's create a new folder inside the scripts folder and we will call it types. 
inside it, create a script called boundary and we can delete all of this. And now we want to go to the player movement class and copy this struct boundary, delete it from here. And now we want to paste it inside this boundary.cs file. Basically, this script is just for holding boundary. And as you can see, everyone is happy, even the AI script is happy. So it's pretty awesome. But having just six fields in the AI script is not enough. We have to make more fields. Their names will be as follows. Public transform, pug boundary holder, private boundary, pug boundary, and private vector to target position. Cool. Now let's set these fields up in the Unity editor. So we want to go to the AI blue. First up, we obviously want to drag the AI script onto here. The max movement speed will be 20. The puck, we want to drag it over here. Player boundary holder is actually going to be the AI boundary holder. And puck boundary holder is obviously going to be the AI puck boundary holder. We have a field called player boundary holder over here and not an AI boundary holder because basically AI is also just a player. It's just controlled by the computer. Now we want to write the start method. We want to set the RB to be equal to the rigid body on this game object. So RB equals get component rigid body 2D. Then starting position equals RB dot position, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now we want to set up the boundaries. We can actually go over to the player movement script and copy this setup of a boundary called player boundary and paste it in here because we have also a boundary called player boundary. But now the boundary holder is not called just boundary holder, but it's rather called player boundary holder. And we want to do similar thing with the puck boundary. If you don't understand what these boundaries do, I really recommend you to watch the previous tutorial. And now we want to use some method, which is going to be like update. But unlike in the player movement script, we won't use update, but rather fixed update method. That's because we are going to be moving a rigid body, which involves physics. It's a good practice to have such a code in fixed update because it's updated at regular time intervals. But I'm not going to go really deep into it in this tutorial. You might be thinking, aren't we moving a rigid body even inside the player movement, which is using a regular update method? And yes, we are. As you can see, we are using update here and we are moving the rigid body rb.move position. But over here, we are also dealing with a user input, which is the position of the mouse, which is better done in a regular update method. We could get around this problem pretty easily, but I don't want to unnecessarily clutter up the code. What we are doing with the rigid body is trivial. The difference between using update and fixed update in this case is minuscule. Just remember that you can have some trouble if you don't put your physics code with fancy calculations and all of that into a fixed update method. So now that that's out of the way, let's make a private void fixed update. Inside here, we want to declare a float movement speed. And now if puck is on the other half of the screen, we want to move only along the x axis. So if puck dot position dot y is less than puck boundary dot down. And inside this if statement, we first want to set the movement speed. It's going to be much smaller than the max movement speed. And it's going to be random. So movement speed equals max movement speed times random dot range and these are going to be floats 0.1 f indicating a float and 0.3 f and this method over here does what it says it generates a random number in this specified range we're multiplying by this random number because we do not want the movement speed to be really really big now we want to set the target position. So target position equals new vector two. And we again want to use the clamp method. So mathf dot clamp. And we want to clamp the puck dot position dot x. 
and we want to clamp it between player boundary dot left and player boundary dot right. And because if the puck is on the lower half of the screen, we want to move only along the x axis. For the y coordinate of the target position, we are simply gonna put the starting position dot y. So whenever the puck enters the lower half of the screen, the AI is gonna move nicely to where it started and it's only gonna move on the X axis. Then if the puck is on the AI side of the screen, we want the AI to move directly to the puck. So else, we wanna set the movement speed again and we wanna set it to random range and this time it's gonna be between max movement speed times 0.4 and max movement speed. So this time the max movement speed is actually really the max movement speed that we have specified in the Unity editor, which is 20 in our case. We also want to set the target position over here, so we can just copy this and paste it in here. And now the Y coordinate of this vector 2 is not going to be starting position dot Y, but it's also going to be a clamped value, so just paste it in here and we want to change this to puck.position.y and the minimum value is going to be player boundary dot down and the maximum is going to be player boundary dot up. This target position is going to make the AI move directly to the puck. And lastly, we want to make the rigid body actually move. To do this, we're going to use the same method as in the player movement script, which is move position. So RB dot move position vector two dot move towards and I'm gonna explain what this does in just a second and the current is RB dot position target is obviously target position and the float max distance delta is gonna be movement speed times time dot fixed delta time. Multiplying the movement speed by time dot fix delta time will make it so that the AI will move the distance of movement speed over the course of one second. Had we not multiplied it, AI would move by the distance of movement speed each fixed update. This would make it look as if it were jumping straight to the puck. And I have made a huge, huge mistake over here because we don't want to have this rb.move position code inside the else clause of the if statement, but rather we want to have it outside the if statement. So now we are good to go. So we are gonna test it and let's hope for the best. And as you can see, AI is playing with us, which is completely amazing. And now let's see what would happen if we did not multiply by this time dot fixed delta time. So as you can see, it's just not working at all. It's jumping all over the place and it's pretty stupid. So congratulations, we have made a working air hockey AI. To make it even more awesome than it is now, we will make a slight modification. We need to introduce some kind of an offset because now the AI is just too precise. We will add this offset to the movement along the X axis when the puck is in the lower half of the screen. The offset will be randomly generated because if you take a look and when we grab the puck and just move it along the X axis, as you can see, the AI is following the puck exactly. We want the AI to be a little bit off so it doesn't look too, too precise. For this, we need to make two new fields. Private bool is first time in opponent's half, and this is gonna be equal to true, and then private float offset x from target. All right, now we wanna go to the fixed update method, and inside this first if statement up here, we wanna write if is first time in opponent's half, and if it is, we wanna set the boolean to false, so is first time in opponent's half equals false. And also we want to generate a random offset. So offset x from target equals random range. And let's put minus one and one over here. So each time that the puck is in the lower half, it's the first time that it's in the lower half. So this if statement runs, but the next update cycle is not gonna run because this boolean is first time in opponent's half is already going to be false. 
because of this line of code. But then, in this else statement, we want to set the boolean is first time in opponent's half to true, because when the puck visits the upper half, the next time that it's going to be in the lower half, it's surely going to be the first time that it is in the opponent's half. And the opponent is obviously from the AI's point of view, so the opponent is actually us. And to make this change have actually some effect, we need to add this offset to the position in this clamp function when we are setting the target position vector 2 in this if statement, which is the if statement for when the puck is in the lower half of the screen. So puck.position.x plus offset x from target. And now let's test if it actually works. So let's play the game. And as you can see, it's completely off, which is just what we want. And it's always going to be off in a different way. Right now it's a bit to the right. And it's still a bit to the right, still a bit to the right, and still a bit to the right. Now it's a little bit less to the right. And now it's a bit more. And as you can see, it just completely changes how it actually yeah and now it's to the left so as you can see it's completely random and the distances are completely random as well and uh, you can obviously play with it and see what you can do with different values for the random function and as i am playing the game i feel that the bounciness of the barrier is a bit low so we want to go to the root folder of assets select the bouncy material and double the bounciness, so it's gonna be 1.5. Now it's gonna be much better to play. And all right, we've made a fully functional air hockey AI. That's certainly something to brag about if you ask me. You can check out the code written in this tutorial on resocoder.com from the link in the description. While in this tutorial we've been making an AI, in the next part, we are going to make a basic UI and we will add a goal counting system to the game. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button if you want to make sure that you get notified. I hope that you learned something new from this tutorial and if you did, please give this video a like and also share it with others. If you have anything to say, suggest or if you just want to troll me, leave a comment. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.